AKG, or alpha-ketoglutarate, created quite the stir last year, when in mice it was shown to extend lifespan by 16%. Now we've got a human trial claiming an 8-year reversal in age. So let's go through the new paper, and then I've got a bit of a rant that I think is important to share, so that you can focus your time and energy on things that will really improve your health. Let's get into it. When trying to figure out if a molecule or intervention will actually slow the aging process in humans, it's quite tricky to do. We've got long lifespans, so waiting for that lifespan data to come out will be waiting decades, and that's led to the creation of DNA methylation clocks. Our true biological age is influenced by many additional factors, such as genetic background, lifestyle, and disease. So for example, in the clinic, if I'm treating a 75-year-old person, there's a wide range of people that come through. We've got some 75-year-olds who are still skiing, they're climbing mountains, but other 75-year-olds, they can barely get to the store. To address this challenge, several biological markers of aging have been developed. These markers are unique sets of molecules or changes in the epigenetic state of an individual's DNA that reflect their current aging status. Among the most promising biomarkers of aging are DNA methylation patterns. DNA methylation is an epigenetic mechanism that plays an important role in the regulation of gene expression, development, and disease. The epigenetic clock is an attractive biomarker of aging because it applies to most human tissues, capturing aspects of biological age such as frailty, cognitive and physical fitness in the elderly, age acceleration in obesity. So let's have a look and see what they did in this trial. What they did is measure the DNA methylation age in 42 individuals taking alpha-ketoglutarate based formulation for an average period of 7 months. DNA methylation testing was performed at baseline and then at the end of the treatment. Remarkably, the individuals showed an average decrease in biological aging of 8 years, which is huge if true. And just for those who are new to alpha-ketoglutarate, it's involved in the Krebs cycle, and the levels of alpha-ketoglutarate then naturally decline during aging. The trouble is, AKG is involved in multiple metabolic and cellular pathways. And AKG deficiency in stem cells, it worsens with age. So the hope is that by taking AKG, we can improve our metabolism and therefore make us more resilient to disease. But here's the thing. This trial is focused on biological aging as measured by a DNA methylation clock. But as I've gone through a couple of times on this channel, we haven't validated these DNA methylation clocks. So let me explain. We've got a separate trial that was published this year in September, and what it was looking at is the association between epigenetic clocks, or DNA methylation clocks, and physical functioning in older women. It followed these people up over a three-year period. It involved 413 people. So DNA methylation, it was measured from samples at baseline, and then they followed them up again over a three-year period. Here's the conclusion. Current epigenetic clocks do not provide strong benefits in predicting the decline of physical functioning, at least during a rather short follow-up period and restricted age range. So in a perfect world, we can use these DNA methylation clocks and we can figure out what is the biological age of that person. And then we can test different interventions and figure out what will happen to that biological age. But again, we haven't validated it, as proven by the study. So ideally, what we should be seeing is a lower biological age and improved functioning. But we don't see that yet. We haven't validated these DNA methylation clocks. So we don't know what the effect would be of a reduced biological age as measured by these DNA methylation clocks. Which brings me back to this new AKG trial. So what they've done is measured biological age as per the DNA methylation clocks. But we don't know what that data actually means for human health. And for me, here is the most important part of this trial. Continued testing, particularly in a placebo-controlled design, is required. So this trial wasn't placebo-controlled, and it's measuring something that's not yet validated to actually correlate with improved human health. So I don't know what the usefulness of this trial is. So yes, it makes for fantastic headlines that AKG reduces biological age by 8 years, 
But we don't know that yet. We haven't validated these epigenetic clocks and this trial, it's not placebo controlled. So for me, what I would have loved to see is what happens to kidney function or liver function with AKG supplements. What effect is there on muscle performance? So we could measure the six minute walking test or we could measure the hand grip strength test. We could see how many times can someone stand up and sit back down in a 30 second time frame. What happens to the recovery time in certain diseases such as COVID-19? All of those measurements, they would be useful, they would be functional outcomes, and we could figure out, will AKG improve human health? But this trial, again, I don't know how to interpret it, because we're using one marker that's not validated for human health yet. And after looking at this paper, would I start using AKG? Well, I think this paper makes for fantastic headlines, but for me, it doesn't give us any useful information as to whether AKG will improve human health. Instead, I plan to focus on a great diet, regular exercise, making sure I'm sleeping well, meditating, and socializing. And I really hope in the near future we've got more human trials coming out with functional outcomes, because there might be something here with AKG. I'm just saying that we don't have the human data yet to say, yes, this definitely will have an improved outcome. And just to give you an example of the type of trial that I would find really exciting, if we took heart failure patients, so I'm talking severe heart failure patients, and we gave half of them placebo and the other half AKG, we could look at how many times those people need to go into hospital for further treatment or what the death rate is in those groups and if we could see an improvement with AKG that is massive and that's where we start to bridge the gap between what we're doing here in the so-called longevity space and the medical world we could actually start using this in human treatments. Or another trial could be to combine AKG with exercise and figure out will that give even greater muscle performance compared to just exercise alone. And that's where I'm gonna start talking about my rapamycin trial. What I want to do is take a group of older people and give half of them placebo and the other half rapamycin once a week. Both groups would be exercising, and I want to figure out, would the combination of exercise and rapamycin give even greater muscle performance compared to just exercise alone? So if you haven't yet, please consider donating to that trial so that we can get useful clinical information. And if you enjoyed this video, please smash the thumbs up button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel. And until next time, thanks very much.